Cars are killing people. They're dangerous machines. A safe car is, is really a safe robot. We believe in the car that is really a guardian angel. It is a car that is uncrashable. And it is that robot. It is the robot that is letting you control it until you're no longer able to do so. I'm uh, Tim Edwards, um, CTO and co-founder of Seeing Machines. There is no technology around that can measure distraction and drowsiness, except ours. My name's Mike Lene, Chief Scientific Officer at Seeing Machines. I have a fantastic role. I get to develop data sets and help this company build better technology for our customers. We are trying to find out are you paying attention to the road? Are you able to, did you notice that the speed sign says it's 90k an hour now and you're doing 120 at the moment? We're already making difference. We can see that uh, the detection of fatigue alarms in, in mining trucks have reduced by 95% when we introduce the system. So we're quite confident that we're helping reduce the risk of you having an accident at the wheel. Uh, my name is Sébastien Rougeau, I'm a co-founder and uh, chief scientist machine intelligence at Seeing Machines. My role is to design and computer vision algorithms for making computers understand what drivers are doing at the wheel, so whether they're paying attention to the road or falling asleep at the wheel, for example. So in Japan, I met other co-founder of Seeing Machines, uh, Alex, and uh, he invited me uh, to work at a new robotics lab he was launching in Australia, in Canberra. Uh, the four people involved at the time were Alex Zelinski, who was the head of the robotics lab, uh, myself, uh, Tim Edwards, who was a sport engineer, and Johan Einsmann, who was a PhD student at the time. So that was in 99, so that's where it all started, basically, yes. So the whole group was really working on human-machine interaction, as it's called and um, I became fascinated with this. I, I joined just really for the opportunity to work with these people and I discovered in that place um, this rich, rich intellectual, intellectual property, intellectual powerhouse of a, of a group of people there that could, um, I thought could change the world and on the ideas we had together we, we launched the company um, into this space which is where we are now. It began with, with uh, monitoring human beings in vehicles and that's what we're still doing today. The beauty of working at Sea Machines is that you know, we have a fantastic engineering team who have developed this amazing core technology that measures attention in the real world and it does it reliably. So as a scientist, I now have a, a very unique tool that I can use and deploy in the real world in a car or a truck or a cockpit um, to better understand driver attention. You know, we're, we're, we're not trying to assess someone's posture, we're trying to assess their attention. And that's a very, very difficult thing to capture. We're trying to look into their mind and see how they're feeling and how they might feel in five minutes time or 10 minutes time. With the advance of machine learning and big data, we can record a lot of data so we can observe a lot of drivers in their day-to-day -day driving routines. And then we have a team of people that annotate those images. So we say, well, I noticed people were looking there at that time or it was looking there at that time. And then we let the computer trying to analyze all this data and with, with math basically try to optimize a model that looking at all those images saying, well, if I see that image, it means the person was looking there. And if I see that image, it means the person was looking over there. So it's just the advance of having a lot of data, a lot of processing power to interpret, to analyze this data and making better and better models. We've created technology to measure human beings, individuals, um, to measure their uh, physical position in space, the their direction of their eyes, the, the diameter of their pupils, etc. Um, but going forward, our niche is really turning that information into um, a, an understanding of what the person is thinking. So it goes from measurement of a face into reading of the mind. So to have a, a camera system look at you, the way, the way a human being would look at you. So, so when we're talking now, I can see that you're looking at me. That means you're interested in what I'm saying. You're smiling at what I'm saying, etc. So it is watch, watching you, measuring you. And when you, when you just turn around into the back seat and because there's a, a child back there or you drop your phone on the floor or whatever it is, it just takes over seamlessly. And so you have to have that, that observation of the person in order to do that. So we realised that a car is really just a, it's going to be an autonomous robot that understands people. 
So we understand the safety landscape. We understand what the real world safety behaviours are. We understand what drives people to behave in different ways. And we understand how to de design technology to address that. So at the moment, we're focused on transport safety um, with our automotive uh, OEM customers, um, our aftermarket uh, fleet customers, um, and our aer aerospace partners as well. But the application of this sort of technology, the application or the need to look into a person's mind uh, is evident in many more places. Driving is definitely the first step, but you can see any, anywhere where a computer has to interact with humans, the technology has some applications. We're building technology that meets a real world problem uh, that is usable for people, that encourages the appropriate behaviours and, and improves safety for individuals and you know, their families and customers. I think it's one of the, the most profound safety problems in the world today is driving a car. It's, it's more dangerous than flying in an aeroplane. It's, it's still a very dangerous thing to do. Um, so solving that problem would be um, a big goal if we could be even a part of that solution.